Um, I, I uh, okay. Um, I, I today I wanted to uh, talk uh, and uh, lead you everyone into uh, a little bit of thinking about a specific personality in the scriptures. Okay, in the New Testament, we see a person, and I want to discuss about that person today. And it's going to be more of a teaching, not a preaching, and uh, just uh, um, just uh, um, uh, putting some thoughts on the life of that person and uh, learning something from the life of that person and how he uh, went around and uh, did the did the work of evangelism. So um, uh, I, I, without any delay, I'm I'm going to give some clues. Right, uh, his name was Saul. And he persecuted Christians. You know who is that? Uh, probably everyone knows that. <laughs> okay, so we are going to talk about this guy whose who's, whose birth name was Saul, and uh, after his transformation conversion, he became Paul. But uh, um, some of the things of his uh, um, birth was uh, he was a Jewish. Uh, and also uh, he was uh, born in uh, Tarsus and uh, uh, he went to a best school. Think about like Stanford or Oxford somewhere. He went to a best school and he uh, learned his theology, philosophy, all his knowledge came from a very well-known preacher of that days. And, and we all know that uh, famous guy, guy, Gamaliel. Gamaliel was uh, uh, Paul's teacher and, um, and 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 like uh, like he was powerful Paul was powerful or Saul was powerful he was Roman citizen and at some point in his lifetime he also exercised his uh, uh, his, his privilege as a Roman citizen right when he was under uh, some sees somewhere he said i'm a roman how can you catch me right so that that's that that was paul and that was his background but one particular thing about this background was uh, where, where, when we see him in 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 the chapter in acts is like his, his career starts around the age of 30 and then he was a he was a very strong persecutor of Christians, right? That's how we see him. And his first appearance happens, you know, exactly where it happens where uh, Stephen was being stoned, right? Stephen was being stoned and he was witnessing that. He was there, uh, probably he was a big authority, Paul was a big authority and he was witnessing and probably it was, taking place under his um, um, whatever leadership, right? People were throwing stones and uh, he was, Stephen was being executed, uh, stoned. And, and that's how we see the entrance of this cruel guy, cruel uh, Roman soldier uh, or a high rank soldier in there. And then that's not all, all, like we still read in Acts chapter eight, like he goes on from house to house, trying to find uh, people who are following the, the way, the way, and it was known as the way, right? He, he was going from house to house and, and, and was looking for people who used to follow the way to catch them and, 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 and throw them into prison. So he was very zealous. He was very, very strong in what he believed. And, and, and in fact, Paul himself testifies about his um, his cruelty in in Galatians 1 3 he says uh, I was excessively persecuting the church of God and was destroying it that's what his word is so um, I, 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 so I feel like uh, we don't get the full glimpse of his atrocities of his uh, whatever we want to call it in today's uh, uh, term genocide or whatever he he was cruel cruel like he was going on killing people who ever followed not only that he, uh, and at his final stages uh, he was like uh, uh, spitting fire he, he went to the, uh, the church leaders and said give me an authority letter 
so that I can go into Damascus and then um, catch hold of these people and bring them and throw them into the prison. And that much uh, um, strong he was in Judaism, that much strong he was in his passion to destroy this, this uh, whole uh, belief in, 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 in Christianity, right? So he was a, a zealous guy who wanted to destroy anyone who is against Judaism and wanted to uh, punish those who, 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 who followed anything which is different than that. So, <coughs> and this is the time when the transformation happens, right? When he is traveling to Damascus and, and we all know like how, um, how, how uh, he fall down and, and the lightning and 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 he um, he 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 had a vision. He saw this lightning and said, oh, "Who is this Lord?" And God reveals Himself to him. Um, and then um, he 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 goes blind. And then he 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 like um, um, he, he uh, goes in. He 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 uh, gets infilled with the Holy Spirit. And then he gets, uh, um, he transforms, and then he comes back as a zealous and fervent servant for Christ. Look at his transformation, right? And that's what is exciting about this guy is like, he was a persecutor of uh, Christians, and now he transforms, not by magic, right? It's an intervention. God had a plan for him. He transforms and comes back as a strong, super strong. And, and like, if we um, keep all the disciples of Jesus at one hand, and you keep Paul at one hand, you can see the difference. Paul had a very, very particular way of going. He was going, let's go, let's go, let's go, get it done, get it done, get it done. That's how he was. And that was what it was impressive about him. His career, if you think about like he started around 30 and he's ended very quickly around 65. That was all he had 35 years of his career of preaching Christ. So it was a short lived career, not a, not a long one. It was a short lived career. And, and then in that career, what all he accomplished? Look at that. He accomplished so much in that in that uh, 35 years, right? He went into different cities, uh, 50, almost like 50 cities. You went in for several evangelistic uh, uh, journeys and then uh, and, 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 and went to prison. I, I guess five years he was in prison out of this 35 years. And finally, in, 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 the, in, in the Roman uh, Empire, um, um, empire time period he was persecuted at the end of his lifetime he was persecuted and he died but his 35 years as a servant of god he was very very effective right he was he was very effective and that's what i wanted to touch base and this is not uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still reviewing a quick background about this personality paul right so uh, in this 35 years he wrote uh, I, I guess uh, almost 14 um, uh, chapters in the Bible, and then um, he he went around so many places. He he uh, he uh, he he big things in his life. He was a witness of cruelty. At the same time, he he was a, a child of God, filled with spirit, raising people from death. At least once he had a, a, a where he raised a dead man, and and then he did so much. He did so much in 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 the in his lifetime, and then. Uh, I remember in, in, in Philippians, let's read that Philippians 121. <coughs> let's turn to Philippians 121. Philippians 121. Uh, Philippians 121, it says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, right? So that's what he says, like uh, at this point, he says that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that was the whole inspiration for me to focus up on, on this guy is uh, what does he mean? What does he mean that he wants to live for Christ and he wants to die for Christ? How can that be possible? How can that be possible, <laughs> right? You cannot live and die at the same time, right? You can either live or you can either die. But this guy says, I want to live 
because I want to live for Christ and I want to die because I want to meet my savior. And that's what, and that's why I wanted you to turn to that uh, uh, specific verse in first Philippians, uh, Philippians 1 21 is because when you read the next two verses, it says what's going on in his head when he said this thing, he said, I want to live for my Christ and I want to die for my Christ. Why? Because it says, I, what, what, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. That's what it is. That's what the passion of this guy is that I want to go and meet my Christ. But at the same time, I want to stay over here and see that the mission of Christ is being accomplished before I leave this body of mine. That's what is this guy. And that's what he means that I want to live for Christ and I want to die for Christ. Die, die To die gain, to die for him is gain because he's going to meet his savior. He's going to meet his Christ. So that's what he want, he's looking forward in his life. So at the, this this is what, 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 what was he um, uh, and towards his end, I, I, I believe like in 2 Timothy, <clears throat> um, uh, that's probably the last letter that he wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 7, and that's a very famous uh, 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 verse uh, where it says that I have fought the good fight. Um, let, let's, let's, let's quickly turn that <coughs> to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. And again, this is uh, just an overview of this guy, right? This personality, Paul, who, who, who got transformed. And here it is. Here, here probably this is the last letter uh, Paul has written. And uh, what he is saying at this point is, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will reward me on that day. And, our, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So beautiful. Like he's confident. God, I know that I have the crown because I, I work for you. So a sinner, a persecutor, a murderer transformed and became a, 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 a big um, uh, a, a, a big uh, vessel or a big uh, leader, a big uh, disciple, a big guy in this whole um, uh, faith, right? If he was not there, there's so many things we wouldn't have known. Like we, we read lo a lot of his letters. One of the things which uh, differentiates Paul from others is he was never afraid of uh, um, of uh, resolving issues, right? He was never afraid of resolving um, um, arguments, whether it's in terms of immorality, whether it's in terms of, uh, um, I'm a disciple of Paul, I'm a disciple of Barnabas, I'm a disciple of Peter, whether it's on topic of food, whether it's in topic of circumcision, whether it's in topic of Gentiles were Jews, anything and everything. He was never hesitant to provide very clear um, um, uh, picture of what uh, Christ uh, has led him to say. So he, he provided those things. And, and I think uh, he provided more than any other disciples in 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 in, in, in the uh, scriptures the the um, uh, way to lead a Christian life. He he was never afraid of that thing. So okay, <clears throat> so we, we see this uh, this personality, a strong personality who came to Christ and did many things, wrote many books, and led us into the right path. But I quickly wanted to move forward and uh, pick up two very important and interesting fact about this guy, okay? And that was, um, um, and I, 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 I um, uh, titled it as uh, uh, Paul the Go-Getter, Paul the Go-Getter, right? He would 
he, he would be traveling uh, Macedonia. Oh, let's go, guy. Let's go. Let's go to Jerusalem. Let's go, guy. Let's go. Let's get into the ship. Let's go there. Let's go there. He was like super energetic. He was going and doing everything everywhere, not even resting, whether he's in prison, where, wherever he is, whether he's killed and laying down dead, he would rise up and walk again and start going and doing. So he was a go-getter. Never anything in his life have stopped him from preaching the word of God. Never anything in this earth has stopped him from preaching the word of God. He would go around and, and, and so the, the one, there are several things which I would like to discuss in the, Paul the go-getter is, but I would want to focus more on, <clears throat> on, 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 on one aspect of his go-getting is uh, he doesn't never wanted to dilute the gospel. He doesn't want it to um, bring any kind of uh, mixture in the gospel. He wanted it super pure. And that's what I want to discuss. Let's turn to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Oh, oh, it's open in front of me. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 15 through 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter nine verses fifteen. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I'll read it loud. It says, "I'm going to skip fifteen. I'll jump into 16. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Who to me, if I do not preach the gospel?" If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntary, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge and so not make full use of my right as preacher of the gospel of uh, preacher of the gospel. So, <laughs> so uh, the background of this uh, um, verse is, is like uh, Paul is talking like those who go out and preach should be paid. And those who, there's a o Old Testament verse also, right? Those who live by the word should get paid by the word or paid by the church or whatever it is. So, but, but the interesting thing about Paul is, Paul says, Paul acknowledges all the support that he gets from anywhere, whether, <coughs> whether he gets it from, um, um, uh, from um, uh, his brothers uh, spread around or he gets it from um, um, other sources. He acknowledges all those things. But at the same time, he says that, uh, um, I, I don't want to be under any authority uh, or I don't want somebody to pay me a salary or I don't want some take take somebody's gift and then I I, I, I preach something which 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 is gonna uh, be um, uh, uh, be um, somewhat um, uh, aligning with the with the with the with the thoughts of others I want to be completely free and and, and that's what is interesting in Paul's life is, he can work as a tent maker. He, his profession was a tent maker. So he would be, uh, and in Acts, we see all those things where he would be in Derby and other places. He would be working with other brothers and sisters to make tent, sell those tent, <clears throat> make the money and go out and preach. So that was he. He was not, he was a very, very a hardworking person, not a lazy person, hardworking for the sake of gospel, for the sake of preaching, so he would. Uh, so this is this is a the, the fact that he would uh, work hard, he would um, earn his money, and he would use that money to support his mission work. That's what his uh, is 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 uh, Paul the go getter is. He's not waiting for anyone to come in and support him uh, on <clears throat> on uh, for his mission work uh, or he doesn't he he doesn't go out and say that okay brothers i'm going for this mission work contribute to this thing and then i will go and say no he's not he has already a laid out plan he's going to execute it and whatever required for that he's going to get it and get it done and go and get the preaching done that's what he is and that 
that is even clear in in in, in Acts uh, where chapter where uh, chapter twenty where he uh, where where uh, he says that uh, I'm going to read out that and uh, you, so we can save some time. So Acts chapter twenty he says that you yourself know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companion. That's what Paul says. These hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companion. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remember the word of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is in Acts chapter 20, verses 34 to 35. So, <clears throat> so Paul, Paul is saying that everyone knows, and, and like there's in, uh, in, in uh, more reference in, in the letter of uh, letter to the Galatians, where he talks about um, how, how much hard work he does to support his mission work, to continue his mission work. And that was that, that, that is what the, the great thing about, uh, about the um uh, about the um uh, about this Paul the go getter is whether in Corinth he worked as a tent maker whether in Thessalonian he worked day and night to get the, uh, and receive support from the Philippian church whether it's in Roman he acknowledges uh, Phoebe and uh, for serving as benefactor wherever it is he 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 is very clear He's very clear. Wherever he goes to work, he is very clear what his mission is. And he's very clear from where he gets his support and he acknowledges that support. He works hard, he makes money, he goes out and get that work done. So that's the one point I want to convey to you this day is Paul the go-getter, for him, there was nothing stopping to move the gospel around, to go around and preach. So that's the one point which I want um, you all to, that's the take home message from, from this, the, the, uh, uh, this personality that we, we, we see over him. The second take home message, and this is the last one, and there's no more. Uh, and, and this is what is again, again impressive is, uh, I would say, and I would term this second point as, Paul, the caring mentor, okay? Paul, the caring mentor. So again, this is a very interesting uh, characteristics of Paul. Like he wrote uh, um, so many 13 letters, right? He, he addresses to the Thessalonian church, he addresses to the Philippians, he, he addresses to his favorite guy, Timothy. Um, and, and in all these things, I'm so impressed that he remembers um, each and everyone's name and writes them. Uh, uh, let me let, let me confirm that. If uh, yeah, I, I think I'm I'm on Second um, Timothy chapter four. That's the last chapter. Now I'm probably the last book uh, which uh, um, uh, Paul wrote. And in the in the final greeting in chapter four, the final verses he say, "Greet Priscilla and Aquila." And the household of On On Sephorus, Eratus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in Miltus. Do your best to get here before winter. Uh, Ebulus greet you, and so do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. So beautiful, right? He remembers each and every brothers and sisters who were. Um, uh, counterparts uh, with him in, in his mission. So that was the caring mentor that Paul was. He was the, he would he, he would um, he would um, make sure that he uh, uh, he 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 um, um, connects with them. And he would make sure that he's praying for them also. And 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 then, and then in, in I think in Timothy itself he says that somewhere he says that I I've, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you everywhere in his letters. This is one thing that he's in the beginning. You would say that I would be, I've been praying for you and I've been thinking of you. All those things. That's how he connect with his all his people, all his uh, all his uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, all these evangelistic 
people he have raised through his lifetime. He would go and preach and build these people and then, um, and then not abandon them, but go uh, back and address them and take care of all their needs all the time. So I think um, one thing interesting is like, uh, again, going back to the life of Paul is uh, um, when, when he came to Christ, uh, uh, no one, uh, the Jesus' disciples was a little afraid, right, uh, to uh, adopt him because he was like, uh, everyone thinking, hey, is this guy truly converted or is he coming to uh, uh, somehow trick us and put us into jail and persecute us? That, that was, a, but then there was a man who, who, who built that confidence, right? It was Barnabas. Barnabas was somebody who came and, uh, and with the, brought him into the inner circle. And then he, 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 he was, a, I feel like somewhere Barnabas influenced Paul because Barnabas showed what um, um, a real mentor is. He brought him in and not thinking like, hey, this guy is super smart. He's going to overtake me. No, he said, this guy has the potential. He's going to do it for us. He brought him into the inner circle, trained him, and he, he went out to um, uh, the first mission wherever it was and then they, they came back and addressed and then they, a lot of missions happened okay so <clears throat> you, you think about Barnabas and how he mentored and think about think about um, um, this guy Paul how he mentored Timothy right Timothy was a very young guy and 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 what's written about Timothy is uh, he, he had with uh, Timothy had great potential and that was was identified um, by Paul it's 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 written in the scriptures like Timothy was very strong and and he, um, Paul identified his uh, uh, um, the the potential of Timothy and and he would take him in his uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> second in his mission journey he would take um, Timothy with him to Derby and Leicester uh, um, uh, and and then and and then. Um, uh, and then we will see that how uh, Paul was really attached to Timothy. Like he, he would be saying that Paul would be saying that he's my son in faith. Paul has said like Timothy is my son. I think in, in Philippians 2, uh, 19, he says, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state as a son with the father. He had served me with, served with me in the gospel. That's what he says. Like, Timothy served with him as a son in the gospel. That's what Paul is telling. And, and, that, and that, that didn't happen automatically. It was Paul who worked uh, uh, very hard every time with Timothy um, uh, and then uh, gave opportunities for him. And then finally, we see how Timothy was leading the church in Ephesus. That's what's, well, um, how it was ended. But... Um, I would like to stop over here with the, all these thoughts of uh, um, one, um, uh, the transformation of Paul was uh, for a reason. And the reason was he got transformed and he was transformed to transform others. That was the reason, right? And his way of transforming others was not depending upon anything else, but depending upon the strength that he had from Christ. He worked hard to support his mission work. He worked hard to teach the church. He worked hard to raise a great um, um, manpower of people who could support this mission, whether it's Timothy, whether it's uh, uh, other brothers and sisters, um, Apollos and um, uh, who else? Uh, there, there were so many other uh, friends of, like we were reading in Timothy, it's uh, like, so there are so many other friends of uh, um, uh, Paul who were counterparts with him in, 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 in all those efforts, right? Um, um, and, 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 and Paul all the way made sure that uh, the uh, word of God is preached uh, everywhere. And, and he um, uh, was uh, successful in doing that thing. And that's where he said that I fought a good fight. 
I, I finished my race. And that's where I want to stop this night. And uh, let's uh, uh, close our eyes and meditate upon these words and think about where we want to, where we want to lead or take our lives to. Do we want to be like Paul who had a mission for his life? Or do we want to be a normal person in this life, just taking care of the needs of our life and not doing the thing for which God has called us? Remember, like, Paul got the transformation. We got the transformation. We are a changed people. And for us, there's a responsibility as a changed people. And are we, ex are we fulfilling that responsibility or not? Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and focus on our Lord who has uh, uh, transformed us, who has restored us, who has given us this new life. Like, like Christ says, you have to be reborn and we are reborn today. And as a reborn people, as a new life, we have the responsibility to, to, to not sit at home. We have a responsibility to reach out selflessly and, and very, uh, very clearly without uh, making any dilution to the world. We have to go out and, and show to the world who we are and teach to the world the, the, the salvation, the life that is there in the, in, in, the, in the world. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for giving us this new life, for giving us this new responsibility, for transforming us, Lord, and for equipping us, Lord. All the resources comes from you, Lord, and all the resources are meant for the, for the progress of your kingdom, Lord, for the, for the salvation of the people, Lord, for, for saving others, Lord, who, 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 who is going to perish, Lord. Use us, Lord, in your kingdom, Lord, to reach out to many, Lord, and to build, a, build, a, build, build an army of people who can go out, Lord, and, and do the things of your kingdom, Lord. Thank you once again, Lord, for this evening that you have given us, Lord, for, 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 for the word that you have put in our hearts, Lord. Let this word, let this, uh, uh, let, let this inspiration um, bring forth many more fruit unto your kingdom, Lord, and, 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 and help us and guide us, Lord, in, 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 in everything that we do, Lord, and, and we submit all our needs, all our, our fears, all our apprehensions, all our planning, all, all, all the things, Lord, which is troubling us this day, Lord, in your hands, Lord, not thinking about anything of our day-to-day -day life, Lord, but focusing on the mission that you have given us and help us, Lord, to progress that mission, Lord. Thank you, Lord, once again, Lord, for this evening, Lord. We submit everything unto your hands. We ask this prayer through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.